If you don't know much about the X9, there's a lot of differences and we'll go through most of them today, but in the cab, very, very similar to a 700 series if you've already had experience running that. Uh, we kind of start with the hydro handle. Again, it's the same hydro handle as an S700 series combine. So there's a lot of customizable buttons on that handle uh, where our previous generation of combines was pretty much uh, like, like the 70 series. What well, didn't really change much in the 600 series, but 700 series, we've got all these buttons. A lot of guys don't even know they're back there. Um, we can kind of go in to the monitor here. We just go to the main menu, machine settings, which we're on there. And then we're going to go to control setup. So a lot of our customizable buttons are right here. So we can take and uh, grab one of them like this, uh, this one here. We've currently, it's the scroll button on the back side of this hydro handle. We currently got that set up for the grain handling portion for the spout. So you can see that that spout on this X9 is pivot, can pivot and that's what we've got set up to control that. And then uh, there's a couple other ones over here for auto track, like center track on that E button. That's what he's got set up there. And then the D button is a shift track. The B button is currently set up on uh, uh, harvest automation. And then you can see some header uh, quick setups as well. So that's how you do that. Get in here and customize. So then uh, just like your uh, tractors, they got a Gen 4 screen on them. There's a lot of shortcuts. If you go to page four and five, you can see all them shortcuts there and you can touch any one of those on your armrest. That'll pop up uh, to, to your short, to what you're trying to look at on the, on the screen. But you also have the ability, um, you know, any one of these on the home screen, these are all shortcuts to whatever you're trying to get to. So if you're trying to go change some combine settings, you can just click on that combine and now you pulled up all your harvest settings. If you want to go change your work setup, you can just go click over here on the work and it opens up your work settings. Same thing, if you want to change your video feed, click on that and you can click on those three dash lines and you can go to, uh, uh, to a different camera view. So it's just uh, really handy uh, and easy to use. Uh, next thing we'll talk about is uh, calibrations. We always get questions about how do we calibrate this head? It's throwing a code. So you, same thing, we're gonna go back to machine settings under the main menu and then you're gonna hit your calibration and procedures. There's two different versions. There's, there's one for the combine, and then there's a second tab for the header. Obviously, we don't have a header hooked to this combine, so we're not going to see all the options available to us as far as your sensors. So uh, those will all be displayed there. You'll have your, your speed calibrations, you'll have your main header calibration, your tilt calibration. So those are all there to do once you have a header hooked up. You gotta have the header off though for the tilt, right? Yeah, you have the header yep. off for yeah. correct tilt. Yep. So, so all your calibrations for the combine are going to be in here too. Um, one we'll touch on here a little bit is active yield uh, a little later, but uh, this, is the, this is where you find it too as far as actually just turning it on and off is here. Um, these four bars, uh, five loads accepted to get all four bars. If you only have one bar, you just haven't done a load yet, or done a test load with it. So. Um, Header setup, so we can go uh, do the same thing. We're under machine settings. We can just touch on the header, and uh, and it pulls up our whole screen here for, obviously it doesn't know what header we're hooked to, because we're not, but you can change your widths. Everything up here, same thing as the shortcut. You can just touch that top bar, and it pops up. Uh, you can change your record stop start height right there. I know a lot of people always struggle finding that, too. Um, uh, the rate, you know, all these other buttons that have, tilt speed and such, you just touch on that and you can obviously easy change it. Uh, your, your one, two, three buttons, so we've always had the one, two, three buttons clear back into I think the 50 or 60 series and uh, you can just click on that. Um, again, more options are going to come up for what we want to activate. I know a lot of guys don't ever realize like with the heads, you can actually make them automated with the reel uh, for your one and your two, um, you know, so when you raise up, I've had some customers that drop the reel and sweep it in and some guys are like, man, I didn't know you could do that. So uh, just another thing that to be aware of that you can customize more so than just the up and down of the head. And I guess to add to that, uh, I always, so one, put one as going up and even have the feeder house tilt back. So if you have stalled crop on the cutter bar, that four aft tilt, you can have that to where it will actually kick back. And then you, when you go two to resume into cut, it will tilt back. 
uh, into your regular uh, how how you would want it to be cutting. I always like to set three as down crop. So I'll get my I'll set it so that the reel if I hit three as I'm approaching down crop, the reel will kick out and down. So just instead of having to do it manually yourself, it's just a quick, easy way. Set it three as a down crop and it'll just make it easier for you uh, going throughout the day. And we do that a lot too with hydroflex pressures too. If you've got a, a wetter part of the field, maybe you want a little less pressure with a hydroflex, you can set a different PSI setting on the two and the three buttons. So you can easily swap between the two. I'll go to work setup next. So there's the easiest way to get the work <clears throat> set up, you can go it through the main monitor or through the main menu too, but the easiest way is a shortcut down here in the bottom left. Just click on that setup. So right here, you're gonna see your equipment. And if you have a head plugged in, you'll see what that is too. If you just click right on the equipment, it'll show you a combine. And then here's where all your offsets are. So you can go down and uh, verify that all those are correct if you need to, if there's an issue. Um, serial number of the combines right there if you ever want to have quick access instead of getting out and looking at the tag. Um, and then again, same thing. There's another shortcut for header settings. So we're right back to that same screen we just saw. Okay. Um, and then your uh, field locations. So you can just type on the location up there. When we load setup data, if we do that properly, which Adam's going to do in the next segment, you'll see your whole list of all your fields here. You can still click on the new field button and go create a new field if you need to. If you're pulling to one that maybe forgot to get loaded or whatever might be the case. Or if you've got different clients and farms and fields, you can go back and um, you know check that there. So, But back to, like I said, this is your field list to so select that. One thing down here in the bottom left hand corner, you'll notice base station. So for all your RTK customers, you can actually click on that and the last RTK tower that this combine pinged on uh, was 4022 that it was using. But if we save that to this field, it'll know when you come back the next time and you turn on this automatic base station switching, it'll automatically go right back to the same RTK tower it had the last time. So I know a lot of farmers bounce around to several different towers. So if you turn that on, you won't always have to be constantly going back in and changing your RTK tower when you move around. Um, and then a harvest setup over here, of course, we got our crop. We can go select what we're doing there and then uh, your variety. So there's two different things. There's just a single variety, but Adam will go through this in the next phase as well too. But for variety locator setup, you'll want to click on that and then you'll uh, be able to select the variety map that, this, that was imported to this combine. Uh, harvest setup down here. Uh, again, it's a lot of shortcuts. So we can go right here, we can click this header controls and it's gonna pull up that header page that we already looked at. You know, Same thing up here, pulls up that same one. If we go over here to these current settings, we're gonna pull up the total combine settings for the, uh, all the configurations for your uh, rotor speed and uh, uh, chaffer clearance and all that. And then your performance target over here on the left, uh, very similar to how we've always set up loss monitors. Um, you know, you always wanna set the combine correct to where your acceptable losses, and then that's when you're gonna hit the set to current. So don't be hitting that set to current before you get the combine dialed in, otherwise your loss monitor is not gonna function correctly the way you want it to. Um, other thing, outside configuration, you can kind of fine tune things a little more. That's underneath there. And you can go down and uh, uh, do some specific setup things if you wanna be a little more precise to get, help get the combine dialed in. Uh, along the harvest setup and the work setup, uh, overlap control, we get that question a lot too. So that is going to be uh, in applications and uh, right down there. I just toggled one spot down, this overlap control, you click on that, master needs to be on, and then that will be functioning. Uh, combine advisor, so we'll go back to machine set, or excuse me, applications. And, all, and like Jesse said, we can just access it from the home page, but I just wanted to show you the full page look and how to find it this way. So same thing, you're gonna have all these preset settings. And once you're, uh, once you're dialed in, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the combine like we're setting up the loss monitor. And we're gonna optimize performance so we can go down and okay, we got some broken grain, so we're gonna click on that one. And then we're gonna say, okay, we got some major broken grain. So now it's given us a recommendation on what we need to do uh, to fix that. 
So we can go back to okay, and then same thing. If we got excess tailings, we can go to moderate, you know, and it'll tell us same thing, same adjustment. But you can either click apply, and it'll automatically make that change for you. Or if you don't want to make that, you can obviously click stop or just go back and click OK on that. Um, once you get those, make those changes and you're happy with it, then you can go down here and you can click that set performance target. And then from there, once you set a performance target, you're able to turn on your harvest automation uh, for the speed of the machine. And then the auto maintain is going to do the auto adjust of your rotor speed, concave clearance, fan, a sieve and chaffer. And when those numbers are changing, they'll turn blue. That's, that's what it's gonna look like when they're changing. Uh, and then they'll go back to black when they're done, done adjusting. So other thing, this automation status in the bottom left-hand corner. So very similar to like your auto track, auto, you know, if there's always, okay, is it the wheel angle sensor or do I not have a line created or what's my issue? Why isn't auto track working? Same thing for automation here, you know, obviously we're not moving. We're not, we don't have the separator on. There's a lot of those simple things that will always be done, but if there's something and it's still giving you a red, or a red light and you don't understand why it's not working or functioning, that's a place to go and just read through and say, okay, what needs to be done? Again, it can eliminate a phone call, just a couple of these simple things if you just go and check and uh, can maybe help you out. The other thing is you got the ability to hit on this live camera. So right here, you can go and select from your grain, uh, clean grain uh, camera, your tailings camera, or you can click on both. So just, uh, again, they're black right now because there's nothing moving through them, but, uh, but it's a good, good reference there. Yeah, so when you click on these, you can make uh, kind of preset some settings on what you want uh, for targets. So again, if you, for your Harvest Smart, if you say, I don't want to cow mine over four mile an hour, you can, you can set it there. So it'll go to a max of four mile an hour. Or, and if you can obviously, you can just go adjust it wherever you want it to be. But, uh, so that's another quick uh, shortcut that's kind of hidden. So once you find that, um, then you can go in here and adjust your engine load where, where you want that to run. Uh, same thing with these other ones. You click on active train adjustments, you can adjust your sensitivities. And the same thing with the auto maintain. You can go in here and adjust your sensitivities on how responsive you want the machine to be. Um, we'll touch quickly here on active yield. So again, I'm going back to machine settings, going to calibrations and procedures. First thing to touch on is active yield there. We, we already did, we already showed you this before, but again, we just need to make sure the master is on to make sure the system functions correctly. One thing I'm going to tell you is trust it. Uh, we have a lot of guys that'll turn this thing off and go do manual calibrations all day long, waste a bunch of time, and then <laughs> tech nine times out of 10, um, if they just would have left it alone, it would, you know, they'd be happy. Uh, I think, and, and the other thing is you cannot have active yield. You cannot weigh it on every single hopper against the grain cart to be perfect. We're looking at the whole field, the whole day. I mean, that's when you're gonna see the accuracy of this system. If you do a one short pass and weigh it in the, in the uh, grain cart, you're not gonna be satisfied every time. A little bit on the home pages. So as I kind of said, they're all shortcuts. Uh, same, you know, like you've got the ability to just hit your rotor speed button right on your armrest, but you can also just come in and hit it right here and you can go and manually change any of these settings that you want to. So uh, pretty, pretty easy to do. Uh, same thing, toggling home pages, you've got the ability to either swipe or you can hit the arrows. If you click on the map, it, it'll open up a bigger map. If you click on that bottom, down here, uh, those three lines, and then click on the three pieces of paper stacked beside it. You can go actually decide if you wanna look at a uh, yield or a moisture map, or if you had a background layer and maybe you wanna put a variety map. So you know when it's switching from varieties um, before it happens. So just a lot of different tools there that don't ever get utilized, right with a lot of farmers and are just seeing the typical blue coverage map. So there's other things that you can look at. Uh, a lot of these, uh, other things over here, like your loads, you can go and view those quick access just from that shortcut. Just click on that bar over there and uh, uh, you can go in and mess around there. If you've got other things you're curious about, what was that load I had three, three hoppers ago? You can go back and see exactly how that's trending throughout the field as you're moving across it. 
Same thing here with your counters. You can go in and you can customize them if you want to just change that either to a machine or a work monitor. You can click on that and, and just go select. Maybe you want to look at uh, hydraulic temperature because you've got, you're having a problem and you just need to monitor it more so today than what you normally do. You can quickly change that. So uh, shortcuts down here on the bottom. So you'll see you've got your work on and off shortcut. That's going to be determined by your height sensor, your auto track. That's just your, you make the, you make a line. You'll have two pieces of the pie. You, you turn that on and off there. Like you always have uh, another shortcut there for guidance to get to your quick screen to set a new line um, as a shortcut. And these are all customizable too. So we can go into uh, same thing with home pages. We go into the applications and then we go down to layout manager there. And we got two different choices for uh, run pages and shortcut bars. So here's the shortcut bars tab that we're currently looking at on the main screen. We can either, if we want to add one, we'll have to delete one that's there. Just click on that and then you can click on remove it. And then you can go back to, uh, oh, sorry, clicking on adding a shortcut and it won't let me because it's full. So if there's one on there, you say, I never use that. I don't know why it's there. And you want to go look at the other shortcuts that are out there. I would, I would uh, really recommend that you look into that because it makes things so much simpler if you can just easily access it at the bottom of the screen. Uh, sharing, one thing we didn't touch on there. So there's a shortcut they've got set up for sharing. You go to applications and then down here to sharing. If you've got two machines running in the same field, two or more, uh, you need to go on here and make sure all this is turned on and enabled. Uh, first of all, before you try and pair them and then you'll, uh, uh, that'll be back in work setup. There'll be a work list here on the shared. That's where you'll need to go and select. So if one combine pulls in um, and gets going, you go down here and click his shared, the shared coverage and it'll join his group and uh, away you'll go.